Thank you very much. Uh, I'm a, a, from Tel Aviv University. My background is in economics and I specialize in risk management. But at the beginning of my career, I started with technological forecasting. I was the first forecaster in Israel in the 60s. And uh, however, I had a big change in my career uh, a few years ago, like about 15 years ago, when the apple fell on my head uh, in the middle of a class of risk management. And one of the students asked me, what are the, can you use the technologies that you were talking about? Can you use them to analyze the risk of the world? And we tried it in class and then I thought to give it even deeper thought later on. And I decided that the major threats that we have to our world are on the environmental and social issues. And uh, this is what I would like to talk about. I'm presenting here the paper not only on behalf of Tel Aviv University, where I am Professor Emeritus already for several years, but uh, also on behalf of a new uh, center that I established. It's uh, called the YK Center. For, it's a for benefit uh, cooperation. It's not intended to lose it. it it's intended to be sustainable for a long period. And I would like to talk uh, about some practical uh, application. At first, some, some uh, more uh, theoretical, descriptive uh, uh, statements, and then I'll talk about some practical uh, ideas. And uh, because I'm a practical man, I, in parallel to my academic career, I've been involved heavily in businesses and established many companies. I, I own technological incubators, so a lot of innovation. And also, I suggest uh, most of the, or a lot of the major NGOs in Israel on the environmental issues. I'd like to open uh, with this uh, very well known uh, picture. Oh, sorry. This very well known picture of the, uh, from the little prince. Uh, here is the, the little prince lives on a small planet. He goes to uh, visit his uh, neighboring planets. He visits the lantern lighter planet. And uh, he hears the complaint of the guy. The job of the guy was to put on the lights in the evening, at sunset, turn them on in the morning. He had a small planet with only one lantern, so his job wasn't that bad. However, his complaint is, is interesting. Because he says, you know, my planet started to revolve really fast. And now, every two minutes, I have a sunset and a sunrise, and a sunset and a sunrise, and they haven't changed the orders. So, what should I do now? You know, my life becomes really miserable. It's really a, it signifies, it symbolizes a, our, a, our world, because we are living, a, we just completed the, maybe the four or, or five most interesting uh, decades uh, in human uh, history and amazing uh, periods and uh, which is characterized by the accelerating uh, movement and uh, what we have seen in the acceleration of story what we have seen in the acceleration was uh, first an immense growth in population just in the last four decades we doubled the world population has increased by three and a half billion people whereas in the 1800 it uh, reached for the first time one billion okay so in 40 years we doubled the population enormous increase uh, we tripled the population that lives in the in the cities the urban population and uh, we have increased dramatically consumerism and consu uh, consumption. The question is whether this acceleration will continue. Most probably yes. Uh, however, the, the growth of the population will slow down a bit. However, we still uh, will see probably in around 2 billion, uh, 2 point something billion people will be added until we reach the maximum. And uh, <coughs> These uh, sustainable uh, these uh, cities are not really very sustainable, and uh, they are really a trap, sort of. Because uh, imagine yourself just in a situation where, for uh, five days, there is or one week, there is no electricity, 
it's a very miserable situation in a, in a city, less speaking about the mega cities that we, the number and their population is increasing dramatically. And uh, I'd like to borrow another, uh, another picture from, uh, from the little prince. He was visiting another, uh, another planet, the little planet of the lazy man. The lazy man uh, was uh, neglecting his job to cut the little uh, shrubs of the barbar trees. Three of them has grown to such an extent that they just destroyed his planet. Again, it's a symbol for what's happening on the environmental issues because all the changes that we just uh, mentioned and many others are leading at the same time to the destruction of our environment and uh, it shows really something else that we know in ecology that uh, one species cannot control the world because once one species extends and multiplies uh, and destroys all the other species only those that he feeds on and those that feed are being fed on, on uh, him uh, survive. Mm -hmm. All the others disappear. And the two other, either the food is, uh, is disappearing because the loss of the chain, uh, the, the food chain is so dramatic, so they destroy him or his enemies grow and destroy him. So uh, this cannot be. And we as uh, mankind are reaching that position now that uh, we are we destroyed already in the last four beautiful decades, we destroyed 30% of all the species, uh, we destroyed 80% of all the fisheries, etc. Uh, etc. Et so and these are known things, everybody knows it. People are talking usually, people uh, even in this conference, people related to the environmental risk mainly on the climate change. Climate change is a very dramatic uh, thing. Uh, of course, in the science, you don't get very strict uh, answers because scientists always are, are uh, questioning things. So, so there are some arguments in whether it does, whether it is a climate change or not. Apparently, there are some climate change. Most of the scientists uh, uh, agree about it. And even if the chance of this is only 5%, let's speak 95%, as a risk management, as a risk manager, I would not uh, disregard them. Okay, uh, it's a, a big uh, threat. At the same time, we are facing. Sorry. At the same time, we are facing also some problem with the with our language. Uh, scientists don't uh, talk to each other. Each one is specializing in uh, his or her field and uh, very little talk, we don't talk the same language anymore in the world. And the punishment, uh, already we know in history uh, that uh, the flood came as a result of that and uh, this is uh, symbolizing the climate change. But in any case, uh, <coughs> this may lead to a situation like this. Imagine, this is a very strange picture, you know, who took that picture? Where is this person standing that he is watching the earth from a distance? Why is it there? What happened to earth? Why? What happened here? So uh, there is a, potentially a catastrophe. Could you put the movie, please? Uh, could you put the movie? Uh, I'd like to show you a movie of uh, my ancestors, uh, my great great uh, father. Uh, was Aaron the priest and Moses uh, my great great uncle? What Moses? We are fucking lost. Okay, I think the message was clear. No, I need 
as a person moves from a black and white situation, a one dimensional or two dimensional space, suddenly being transformed into a colorful, amazing uh, environment, uh, multi dimensional. Okay? So that's what we should strive for. Uh, some countries, like uh, Bhutan, for example, they, they introduce that they are using the happiness index. I mentioned just uh, about a year ago, I met uh, the, the, the minister from Bhutan, and they are using the happiness index, and which is not only economic. And uh, the OECD has recently this, uh, developed a set of well being indicators which combine also medical uh, things, education, legal system, love and affection, sports, uh, monetary system, education, etc. Et et and uh, <clears throat> so we should try and use such uh, <coughs> indicators. However, there is a problem here because it will look like the, the dashboard of our leaders or, or, or those that have to lead our uh, system we look at something very complicated with so many indicators on it that it is very difficult to lead the, the world. So really what is needed is to find a somewhat more simple uh, uh, dashboard which will include in one or two or three gauges it will tell us what to do. Okay? So I don't have the solution for that and I really call for, a, for consultation with everybody. I ask for your help. Let's work on the method how to, to put this in action and to have more or less the same idea of the invisible hand working not only on economic criteria but also in a combined uh, measure. And just to show that it, I'm not just uh, talking in the, that I'm not just talking in terms of a uh, the theoretical thing. I'd like to show my area of expertise, which is the financial markets, and the, let's talk about it for a minute. In 2005, the Stern Report has been published. The Stern Report talks about the energy in the world. And the, this uh, report said that the damages of the climate change is, a, is causing a the loss of about between 5 to 20 something percent of the global GDP every year, a substantial loss. And they also estimated that we need about 2 percent of global GDP every year in order to countermeasure these effects. So I'm a practical person, so immediately I made a calculation. 2 percent of the GDP today is about a one and a half trillion dollars. It's a huge amount of money. One and a half trillion dollars. So the question is, where can I get this amount? Okay? And I have uh, some rich uh, people, and uh, I told you what my specialty is. Uh, I'm an actuary, and I do a lot of work in, in risk management and insurance. And of course, oops, many of my friends are in that industry. And the insurance industry, and the pension plans, the financial sector there, they maintain a portfolio, they manage a portfolio of about $80 trillion, which is a lot of money. It's more than the global GDP, the annual global GDP. So I said, well, you have to uh, recycle about $7 trillion of this every year. So decide that you put aside one and a half to these goals. It will serve everybody. You are the only long-term investors in the world. You are our connection between the present and the future because you determine the investments. Okay? I don't want you to I don't want to see you investing in uh, in uh, just all kinds of exciting uh, papers. I like you to invest in real investments that will grow the economy in a green way, in an environmental friendly or in social friendly way. So let's do that. So I started to talk with these guys and they, they are the, the managers of the insurance companies and the pension funds and they finally, they, about seven years ago, 
they appointed a committee and then they got the, also to work on the, the treaty, on the, the voluntary treaty, and uh, they got the, the auspices also of the UN, the Environmental Protection Agency, the UNEP, and they started working on it. I was very happy in, uh, in June uh, 2012, there was the Rio Plus 20 conference to commemorate the 92 meeting, and uh,